Selim sir, live us. Sir, start us. Welcome. Very good morning. Welcome to today's special discussion on World Heart Day 2021. This special CME organized by Bangladesh Society of Cardiovascular Prevention and very best wishes from the Bangladesh Society of Cardiovascular Prevention. Dear audience, we are now passing a very difficult time, COVID pandemic, but cardiovascular disease is not stopped due to COVID pandemic, but increasing day by day. And among the cardiovascular disease, the most important risk factor is the hypertension. We know hypertension, actually silent killer, is a pivotal role in cardiovascular epidemic. And it challenges in detection and management. So we are now going to a special uh, CME. And I want to give the welcome uh, speech and the permission from the our today's chair, Professor M. Nozul Islam, sir. And uh, today's uh, yes. uh, panel of expert will be the Dr. Professor Dr. M. A. Khalek, the head of the Department of Cardiology, uh, Islamic Bank Medical Hospital, Rashahi, and the Professor Dr. Jackie Rushen, head of the Department of Cardiology, Shere Bangla Medical College. And our speaker is Professor Shishir Kumar Parshak, and the SA Professor Medicine, select MHS for Medical College, and also the Scientific Secretary of the Bangladesh Society of Cardiovascular Prevention. Now I request Professor Nozum Islam sir to give some speech uh, regarding to the CME and give the permission for the starting the CME. Uh, thank you, sir. Th uh, thank you, Dr. Uh, Salim. Actually, Bangladesh Society of Cardiovascular Prevention is, has been formed uh, to give some preventive aspect of cardiovascular disease in this country. All of which are, as we know, that the treatment or curative treatment of cardiovascular disease, in that matter, every uh, disease is very costly and sometimes very uh, difficult to conduct in these our socioeconomic conditions. So, the uh, Bangladesh Society of Cardiovascular Prevention has been formed especially uh, to try to prevent uh, uh, the cardiovascular diseases prevailing in this country. So, from this, I like to say that uh, of the cardiovascular diseases and of the cardiovascular complications, hypertension is, is a very important uh, risk factor or disease uh, in the society in, uh, and, and in fact globally. So this, in this CME, CME, we have chosen hypertension and, of, uh, and also we have chosen uh, a very nice presenter and a speaker, uh, Dr. Sisir Boshak uh, from SILIT to present uh, this, uh, this particular important and common diseases, how to, di how to diagnose it, how to assess it, and how to treat it, and if possible, how to prevent it. So without any delay, I request uh, Dr. Cecil Gomar Bosak to start his presentation. Thank you. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, <clears throat> honorable chairperson of uh, today's webinar, uh, respected uh, panel of expert, uh, Professor Abdul Khalek, sir, and Professor Jakir sir, uh, respected moderator, and the audience. Assalamu alaikum and welcome to today's webinar. Today I am going to uh, <clears throat> discuss on such a subject, hypertension, which I have been taught several times by my respected teacher, Professor M. Nurzul Shamsar. I have actually attended so many beautiful lectures of Professor Nurzul Shamsar uh, regarding hypertension. And today I'm trembling to discuss uh, uh, about, uh, to present about hypertension in front of SAR. Uh, if there is some uh, mistakes, sir, please uh, correct me. I, I don't know how will be the presentation. I'm going to start my presentation. And the topic is hypertension, a silent killer, challenges in its detection, treatment, and control.
So if we look at the impact of hypertension, it is the largest single contributor to the global burden of disease, causing two thirds of all strokes, one half, almost half of all ischemic heart disease worldwide, and second leading cause of end-stage renal disease only behind diabetes mellitus. Despite this fact, there remain low levels of awareness, treatment, and control of control in all regions of the world. It is called silent killer because there are often no symptoms until significant damage has been done. World Heart Federation actually released a roadmap for hypertension in 2021, just a few months back. Uh, I will actually show a, a short webinar on this, three minutes uh, short video clip, uh, just a uh, few slides later. Before that, I see, we see some figure here. Approximately 60% of the adults develop hypertension by the age of 60 years, up to 90% of the adults living to 80 years of age are likely to develop hypertension. So almost inevitable consequences of our destiny, it seems so, especially in the industrialized countries. And hypertension causes over 50% of the heart disease, stroke and heart failure. And it is actually costly disease, about $100 billion per year, global healthcare savings from effective management of blood pressure. So we, if we can effectively manage uh, the blood pressure, we can save this kind of money, but we will see how dismal failure uh, we are in the detection and treatment of hypertension. These are the figures globally 74% uh, 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 individuals. This is the survey of World Heart Federation member survey of 46 countries, which shows that globally 74% report that patients are unaware that they are at risk of hypertension and unaware of their hypertension status and also they do not know whether they have got silent CVD. And in uh, low middle, uh, uh, lowest uh, income countries, 92% report that patients are unaware that they are at risk of hypertension. This figure 74 globally and this figure in low middle income countries. 70, 65% report that they do, uh, uh, that patients do not adhere to the treatment. 65% patients do not adhere to the treatment. So non-adherence is the, my single best uh, roadblocks in the treatment of hypertension. So now we see a small video clip. It's not playing. Yes.
So uh, this uh, small video clip summarizes uh, all important aspects of hypertension uh, and its control. Now we actually look details into uh, this paper, worldwide trends in hypertension prevalence and progress in the treatment and control from 1990 to 219, 20 years period, a pooled analysis of uh, 1,201 population representative studies with 104 million participants. This is recently published and is presented in recent ESC 2021 conference. Uh, it is funded by WHO. <clears throat> Let's see some figures from here where we will understand how, uh, what is the prevalence, what is the rate of control, and what is the rate of treatment. Uh, globally. So to get a global picture, let's see in women, in the following slide, the same thing will be for men. Uh, let us note here that this is the all women with hypertension worldwide, and 41% are not diagnosed. They are in the society because they are asymptomatic, they do not come to the uh, healthcare professionals. This portion, 59% are diagnosed. And among this diagnosed population, 12% actually are not treated. They are not getting treatment. And this is 47% are treated with drugs. And among those who are treated with drugs, <clears throat> only 24% are treated, but not controlled. They are taking drugs, but they are not at target, gold blood pressure. Only 23% uh, are controlled. I mean, they are treated to the goal. <clears throat> and this is diagnosed but not treated means, untreated and not treated means has hypertension but not taking medication. Treated means defined as persons taking medications. Where, where, uh, what, uh, wherever their target uh, blood pressure is, they're just taking treatment, but not controlled. And treatment defined as hypertensive patients whose blood pressure systolic is less than 140 and diastolic less than 90. If the target is 120 uh, over 80, this figure will be further less. <clears throat> and this is the figure uh, in high Western countries. We see this 23 figure is larger, 43. And in South Asia, of which Bangladesh belongs to, this figure is down to 17% only. So 17% in South East Asian persons are only called, controlled among the hypertensive population worldwide. Uh, 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 of the hypertensive population in Southeast Asia. So this, this is the same figure as men, similar picture. And this is the figure for 20 years span of hypertension. This is the number of people in millions. This, is, this figure is undiagnosed, large population. Diagnosed but untreated, this population. Treated but not controlled not at the target, only this narrow strip of population are controlled to the target. So these are increased. It is the hopeful that this uh, uh, proportion is increased. And if we compare uh, the high income Western countries to Southeast Asian, uh, they are developing because their controlled portion uh, is actually increasing. In Southeast Asia, this is also increasing, but at a lesser a pace at a lesser magnitude. So coming to this figure, uh, so we have got actually 18% control, or this is the South Asian only 11% in case of men, this is 11% control. So if we ask uh, among those persons who are controlled, are they protected from cardiovascular uh, death, which is the main uh, target of, uh, of uh, hypertension treatment. Let's see. The main aim of BP control is cardiovascular risk reduction. So if we question, if all the persons who have got controlled blood pressure has got the CV cardiovascular risk reduction, yes or no? Let's see these two figures. Results of randomized trials of antihypertensive drug therapy. The fatal and non-fatal stroke is reduced by 38%. The remaining are not protected. Fatal and non-fatal CHD, 16% is reduced. Vascular deaths, 21% reduced. And heart failure, 52% reduced. This another data. Effects of intensive blood pressure lowering in older adults. More than 65 years of hypertensive patients, we see 
29% reduction of MACE, major adverse cardiovascular events, 33% reduction in CV mortality, and 37% reduction in heart failure. So around 30% reduction in cardiovascular outcomes. So all the patients who have got blood pressure controlled by pharmacological therapy are not getting the CV risk production. So in Bronold's heart disease, this is the comment. Trials show that even among the patients whose blood pressure control meets the current standard, fewer than one in three is protected from subsequent stroke, myocardial infarction, and heart failure. So ultimate protection we are giving, this is the control population in Southeast Asian, 11%, one third of this one. I mean, three to 4% only people, hypertensive population are protected from cardiovascular disease. So we here get the dismal state, the gloomy outlook of overall hypertension control and cardiovascular protection. And actually, this is the uh, a final picture uh, given by uh, w World Heart Federation roadmap. This figure is taken from that document. Treatment cascade from patients with hypertension. This is the total population of patients with blood pressure. And patients who know their blood pressure is less than that. Patients with hypertension being treated less than that, under control less than that, and patients' adherence is the single most important barrier for optimal control. So getting this population picture, let us go to the patient. When we clinicians confront the patient, when the patient is in front of us, we need to evaluate. Here are also some barriers, how well we do uh, when the hypertension patient comes uh, in front of us. So let's talk about some evaluation of hypertension. All clinicians, all the clinicians we, who treat hypertension, we know all these things. Uh, that uh, from history, physical examination and, in, uh, and investigation, we evaluate patients with hypertension. Hypertension is usually asymptomatic as we, we know until diagnosis is made at routine physical examination or when complication arises. So how the diagnosis is made of hypertension? This is very important and crucial. What is normal blood pressure? How blood pressure is defined? And during diagnosis, we have got a uh, important uh, factor regarding office BP versus uh, ambulatory blood pressure monitoring or home blood pressure monitoring. This is the areas of concern around the diagnosis of hypertension. So in the following slides, I will actually uh, make some notes regarding this. So consider two persons, uh, hypothetical patients, person A, who's, is, who is normotensive and uh, his blood pressure is 120-80. Person B is hypertensive patients treated with drugs and his blood pressure is 120-80. Is the risk, CV risk equal in these two persons? Antihypertensive therapy reduces major cardiovascular events. Antihypertensive therapy reduces major cardiovascular events. It does not lower them to the level seen in normotensive subjects. Thus, there is remaining risk in hypertensive managed according to the current guideline. So risks are not equal. So hypertensive patients have got some other things. And we see and we say that the hypertension is not a just a BP number. There are, it is the tip of the iceberg only. So there are main pathological processes underneath like genetic predisposition and all the pathogenetic mechanisms. And ultimately, hypertension is a vascular disease, what we actually forget. We treat the BP numbers, but actually the hypertension is at the end of the day, it is a vascular disease. That's why we cannot actually uh, lower the cardiovascular risk in all the patients, even they are treated. This is the actually uh, very known figure to all of us, the systolic blood pressure. Mm -hmm. And this is the uh, relative risk of uh, death from, relative risk of uh, actually coronary disease and this is the stroke. We see with the increase of blood pressure, the relative risk of coronary heart disease here and here relative risk of stroke increases almost linearly. This is the same figure with A stratum. In all ages, this happens. The risk linearly increases for coronary disease and stroke vascular risk. And the risk goes down to below at least 120 millimeter mercury. So 
there is, this is very important to note that the risk of vascular complications increases progressively and linearly with higher BP values. So exact cut point to define hypertension is somewhat arbitrary. So American College of Cardiology defined recently uh, at the hypertension at uh, uh, more than 120, 80, and others are actually 140, 80. So all these are arbitrary because we see that the coronary artery mortality and stroke mortality are actually traceable even below 120, 80 millimeter mercury. It should be reminded when it should be uh, actually uh, kept in our mind while we are treating hypertensive patients. Uh, now, while actually measuring blood pressure, we have challenges of actually measuring blood pressure, whether we are getting office blood pressure or others. Let's see. Office BP is most commonly the basis for hypertension diagnosis and follow-up. <clears throat> Usually two to three office visits at one to four weeks interval, depending on the BP levels are required to confirm the diagnosis of hypertension. The diagnosis might be made on a single visit if the blood pressure is more than 180 over 110, and there is evidence of cardiovascular disease. When these two are present, we can make a diagnosis in a single visit unless we uh, actually need more than one visits and more than one blood pressure measurement at a single visit. This is also a challenge in, in, in actually uh, healthcare, uh, for the healthcare professionals when we are diagnosing hypertension. It is, if possible and available, the diagnosis of hypertension should be confirmed by out of office measurement. Recently, it is recognized that the office BP is not a, a good tool to confirm hypertension because of some um, <clears throat> white coat effect, and we cannot actually uh, manage to get all the uh, standards of blood pressure measurement that are see, we see in this figure. It is taken from 2020 International Society of Hypertension Guideline, Global Guideline. So we all know this. How to, how to measure blood pressure, we know, but uh, sometimes we cannot actually um, fulfill all the conditions. These conditions are, we know, it must be a quiet room, comfortable temperature, no smoking, no coffee, uh, for at least 30 minutes, empty bladder, relax for three to five minutes. These are the challenges in actually measurement of blood pressure. Position is must be upright and, uh, the back must be aligned, uh, supported by uh, the chair backrest and foot on the floor in the position. Device must be calibrated and the, it must be measured when keeping at the heart level and the mid arm must be at the level of the heart. Protocol is actually, we have already told that the, we have to measure three measurements at one minute interval and use the average of the last two measurements. And interpretation is this, that blood pressure of two to three of his digits, two to three of his digits is required in most of the cases. And if it is equal or more than 140, 90 millimeter mercury, then it indicates hypertension. So these all criteria or requirements for diagnosis, sometimes it's difficult in our practical scenario. So uh, uh, this is the hypertension diagnostic criteria we all know out of the office blood pressure measurement, uh, we should confirm it sometimes with ambulatory blood pressure monitoring or home blood pressure measurements. These are the uh, cutoff points uh, as defined by 2020 ISH global guideline. Normal BP is 130 over 130. It's less than uh, 85. It's high normal. This is grade one. This is grade two hypertension. And this is office blood pressure, which uh, characterizes them to be hypertensive. This is the figure ambulatory blood pressure. We, if we measure 24 hour average, more than 130 over 80, and these are daytime and nighttime. This is home blood pressure uh, records. So remembering all these figures is also challenging uh, for a healthcare provider. Next thing for evaluation is uh, actually to identify the target organ damages, we know these are the target organs. And target organ damage actually means it's defined by structural and functional alteration in the arterial vasculature and or, or the organs it supplies that is caused by elevated blood pressure. We all know that uh, hypertension causes structural alteration in small, uh, small blood vessels, 
reduces their lumen. This raises the mean blood pressure and target da damage of the organ occurs. And this causes the structural alteration of large arteries. And this increases the central blood pressure. And this is a vicious cycle that's, that goes on and on in hypertensive patients. That's why hypertension builds up with age and more and more drugs are required. And these are the target organs because of the vascular damage, these organs, kidney, heart, brain, and eye are damaged, we all know. Next, we must identify the comorbid conditions. We know these are the comorbid, there are a lot of comorbid conditions which are needed, which we should know to prescribe the right drug to the right person. We must know that the 95% cause are primary and 5% cause are secondary. We must search for that. And uh, we must actually perform CV risk assessment, cardiovascular risk assessment. We must know that the other risk of cardiovascular disease are present or not. And also some behavioral risk factors, which are not usually done. Uh, is the patient obese? What is his weight or BMI regarding diet? and physical activity, psychosocial stress, we must ask for this one. And for this, we must note that the uh, major determinants of blood pressure in primary hypertension is actually environment and genetic factors, and also the social determinants. They interact together to actually uh, express the hypertension as a phenotype. And these environmental factors are to be sought in that particular person. And environmental has a tremendous role because it is said that when patients are genetically predisposed to hypertension, the environmental factors through the epigenetic mechanism, the, there is genetic, actually uh, the expression are revealed. These the, the genes are actually expressed by the epigenetic mechanism and they become hypertensive. So genetic predisposition is sometimes not necessarily governs our fate. Industrialization has changed our environment and environment influences gene expression through epigenetic mechanism. So these are modifiable and globally we are actually failing in spite of very smart drugs, we are still failing because our environment is changing, globalization and industrialization has actually challenges us, uh, challenges our environment to, uh, to, to, to survive. And uh, by, this modif by modifying these environmental challenges, we can actually do a lot in the control of hypertension. As for example, this obesity and overweight, uh, how this environmental factor impacts the hypertension. Risk estimates from Framingham, Framingham Heart Study suggest that approximately 78% of primary hypertension in men and 65% in women can be ascribed to weight gain. So we can think of the prominent role of environment in, the, in primary hypertension. So we recapitulate uh, the challenges a physician faces when the patient is in front of him or her. We need to do so many things uh, to evaluate the hypertension. It is definitely a challenge uh, for a physician, but we are, we, uh, we are doing this, but actually it, it's, it's a challenge. Going to the treatment, lifestyle modification and pharmacological management, we all know. Lifestyle modification, sometimes we actually ignore or do not do uh, very um, professionally, uh, but there are some advantages of lifestyle modification. Healthy lifestyle choices can prevent or delay the onset of high BP and can reduce cardiovascular risk. Lifestyle modification is also the first line of antihypertensive treatment. Modification in lifestyle can also enhance the effect of antihypertensive treatment. And we all know the salt reduction is very important. Healthy diet is important. DASH diet is important, which is more in fruits and vegetables. And here it is very important that the sodium potassium ratio. So if we, we are consuming more and more sodium because of the processed food and less and less vegetables which supply the potassium. So we must reduce the sodium intake in our diet and increase the potassium intake uh, in our diet and that has got some prominent role in the management of hypertension. This has got role also in the primary prevention of hypertension as well. Smoking cessation has an important part, weight reduction. Uh, 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 we are, if we reduce our weight to ideal body weight, it decreases our blood pressure. Irregular physical activity uh, as per guideline mm -hmm. is very important for reduction of hypertension. And finally, reduction of stress and inducing mindfulness 
has an important role in blood pressure treatment. Uh, this for, uh, I'm actually presenting two slides for treat, drug treatment. Uh, this is from 2020 ISH, International Society of Hypertension Guideline. Uh, this is actually uh, for, uh, this guideline is formulated, formulated for global practice because every society has got their own guideline for their own country, and this is a global guideline. Uh, drug treatment of hypertension thresholds. The, here are two recommendations. One essential minimal standard of care in poverty setting, if we cannot do, uh, if we have got limitation of resources, uh, we have to maintain this uh, minimal standard of care. And optimal means evidence-based standard of care. When every facilities are available, then we can provide evidence-based evidence uh, standard of care. So uh, when the diagnosis is established, lifestyle advice is given. And for grade one hypertension, who are at high risk of uh, high risk patients and has got this hypertension mediated target organ damage or CVD, CKD, diabetes, we must initiate treatment. We all know. But in case of low to moderate risk, without having target organ damage, we can actually follow three to six months of lifestyle intervention. And if BP is not controlled, then we can start antihypertensive therapy. And grade two hypertension, we must straight away go to drug treatment. And here is the essential one uh, for threshold and target. Target BP reduction by at least 20 over 10 millimeter mercury, ideally less than 140 over 90 millimeter mercury. This is the target. Optimal is this essential, minimum standard of care. And optimal is less than 65 years, BP target is less than 13080 if tolerated, uh, if tolerated, but must be more than 12070. If the age is more than 65 years, equal or more than, then BP target less than 14090 if tolerated, but consider an individualized BP target in the context of frailty, independence, and likely tolerability, tolerability of treatment. And aim for BP control within three months. Here is a drug choice optimal setting. Uh, in step one, they are actually recommending uh, single pill combination therapy. Single pill com because uh, to reduce the pill burden and to increase drug compliance, they are actually advocating step in step one, dual low dose combination uh, for actually uh, angiotensin converting enzyme or ARB with calcium channel blocker, low dose combination of this two drug, step two, full dose combination of this two drug in step three, triple combination with adding diuretic and step four is resistant hypertension. Accordingly, we, uh, they are advocating to add spironolactone. Essential recommendation is use whatever drugs that are available. No choice, whatever drugs available. If single pill combination is not available, use free combinations. Use thiazide diuretics if thiazide-like diuretics are not available. So in essential, that is uh, low income setting, um, uh, uh, low resource setting, they are advocating uh, 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 any drugs that reduces blood pressure. So uh, finally, we can see that there are some roadblocks uh, between hypertensive population getting uh, diagnosed, who are diagnosed, they have, we have barriers between diagnosis and treatment, between treatment and control, and between control uh, and CV risk reductions. We will actually uh, uh, note some factors why they are occurring and their possible solution. Asymptomatic nature of this condition delays diagnosis. People are in the community, but they do not know they are hypertensive because they are silent. That's why this is known as silent killer. So sometimes lack of awareness that they should measure blood pressure, and for this, we need to do mass public education, structured population screening program, and opportunistic measurement of blood pressure. And we deal with uh, together these three. Why these are occurring from diagnosis to all the patients who are diagnosed are not treated, and all those are treated not, are not controlled. Why? Because there are a poor understanding of hypertension on the part of the patient and also some, uh, some physicians. This is the report of World Heart Federation. Lack of willingness to seek 
treatment for an asymptomatic condition. People are not willing to treat because it's an asymptomatic condition. I have no problem. Why should I take the drug? Medication adherence, single most prominent roadblocks or barriers in the in blood pressure control, which have got which are influenced by several factors like insufficient time for patient education on the part of the physician, increased pill burden, drug cost for a poor patient, and medication side effects. People are stopping the drugs. Physicians often undertreat the patient. Education of healthcare recipients and carers. These are not in place. And effective treatment requires continuity of care because we are not prepared for chronic disease management. We are our hospital system and our health system is prepared for acute uh, care setting. But for the chronic uh, care, we need to establish a chronic care setting which will follow up the patients and will actually give the continuity of care to the patients. Why all the control patients with drugs are not getting severe risk reduction because of the smart, uh, although the smart antihypertensive drugs are present. Here comes the lifestyle intervention is not actually prominently in place. We must exercise this one also. So summary of this slide is non-adherence to antihypertensive treatment affects 10 to 80% of hypertensive patients and is one of the key drivers of suboptimal BP control. And this is the last slide. Uh, this is taken from Journal of American College of Cardiology. So for the prevention of control of treatment of hypertension, con uh, treat, uh, prevention and control of hypertension, we need to address three areas, hypertension awareness, hypertension treatment, and hypertension control, working at individual level and at provider level. What we can do? Patient identification, that is by mask screening, mass screening, blood pressure control, and monitoring, at the patient and practice level, increase patient and provider awareness of BP control and positive if effective guideline, use systemic, systematic follow-up, utilize shared decision-making, clarify roles for the provider to implement team-based care, implement lifestyle recommendation and counseling, reduce barriers to achieve high adherence, use electronic medical records and mobile health technology, and self-BP monitoring and telemonitoring and apply the chronic care model. This is very important. Thank you very much for patient hearing. Thank you very much, sir, for your excellent presentation. Sir, I'm Dr. Abu Talha Bin Fakru, recently graduated from Silicon Valley Medical College. And sir, I'm Ashole Afna Shamne Boshe, and I'm a presentation dekchi. It our kachekta legendary paper monochse. Karon. I'm a directly student. I'm a third year, fourth year, sir. I'm a class. I'm a curriculum, sir. I'm a sir. Osmani Medical 53rd batch. Evon Achke Apner Oshadhorn presentation. The Hamar Kachemono Hutse Achke Judi presentation. Ta Osmani Medical Shobai Evon Shab Shara Bangladesh of Medical College was student row. Actavari hypertension presentation to Dekhe Amar Monohai, sir. Hypertension actually Amadije common kitchu misconception. Take. বা ম্যানেজমেন্টের ব্যাপারে কিছু কনসেপশন যেটা ক্লিয়ার হয় না আমার মনে হয় আজকের প্রেজেন্টেশনের পরে ক্লিয়ার হয়ে যাবে স্যার थैंक यू सो मच অলরেডি স্যার এই প্রে এই লিংকটা যেটা ফেসবুকে আজকে লাইভ গেছে এটা ওসমানি মেডিকেলের আমাদের সব স্টুডেন্ট এবং সবার কাছে পৌঁছে দিয়েছি স্যার थैंक यू थैंक यू सो मच थैंक यू वेरी मच স্যার আপনার এই অসাধারণ আপনার কিছু ইম্পর্টেন্ট ভিউজ আজকের এই প্রেজেন্টেশন এবং আজকের এই টপিকের উপরে যদি আমাদের সাথে শেয়ার করতেন স্যার খালেক স্যার প্রফেসর খালেক কি আছে তো অনলাইন আমি জি জি স্যার খালেক স্যার তো দেখাচ্ছেন একটু মুট হয়ে আছেন স্যার ওকে রিকোয়েস্ট করো আনমিউট করতে এবং জি জি স্যার খালেক আর ইদেন ফোন দিছি স্যার ফোন দিছি স্যার এ কেন আস্ক কেন নক ডক্টর জাকির দে শিওর স্যার শিওর স্যার স্যার নক করছি স্যার আমি বাই দিস
স্যার অ্যাকচুয়ালি খালেক স্যার এই মুহূর্তে আনমুট হতে পারে লাইভে আছে বাট আনমুট হতে পারছেন না স্যার তোমরা এখান থেকে আনমিট করতে পারো না তাকে হ্যাঁ থ্যাঙ্ক ইউ থ্যাঙ্ক ইউ স্যার হ্যাঁ এটা শোনা যাচ্ছে তো খালেক হ্যাঁ স্যার একটু টেকনিক্যাল প্রবলেম হয়েছিল ওয়াইফাই এখানে একটু সাডেনলি কল আসছে করে গিয়েছিল আর কি থ্যাঙ্ক ইউ অল আর ছবিটা আজকে ছবিটা অন করো ছবিটা অন করো হ্যাঁ ঠিক আছে না থ্যাঙ্ক ইউ uh first of all i gave the many thanks to professor uh, dr sishir bosak he nicely presented uh, his topics the at present the near burden hypertension hypertension amader samaje sobcheye common ekta disease amader sadharon manush theke shuru kore top level shobar moddhe hypertension ne awareness ekta hoyeche kintu but awareness is not रिसेंटलिंगजिनियर सहेब शिक्षित मानुष प्रेसक्राइब कर आजीवन ओषु खाते कारण ओषु बंद कर दें जेको दिन आपन क्या कंट्रोल रखते आजीवन मृत्यु ओषु खाते मन रखते तब एक कम्बिनेशन दिल एक ब्लाड प्रेसर नियंत्रण आसलो तो जैक बलार उद्देश्य हल अनेक शिक्षित मानुषर मध्य समाज ब्लाड प्रेसर कंट्रोल क्षेत्र इम्पोर्टेंट मन करीजारे कंट्रोल क्षेत्र क्षेत्र दिखाउंसिलिंग क्षेत्र 
এগুলো আমরা যেন সচেতন ভাবে মানুষের মধ্যে কমিউনিকেট করি আমার এইটুকু বক্তব্য আমার কথা শেষ করছি থ্যাংক ইউ অল থ্যাংক ইউ ভেরি মাচ প্রফেসর ডক্টর এম এ খালেক স্যার আপনার অসাধারণ ডিসকাশন আমাদের সাথে শেয়ার করার জন্য আমি এই মুহূর্তে প্রফেসর ডক্টর মোহাম্মদ নজরুল ইসলাম স্যারকে একটু রিকোয়েস্ট করব আমাদের সবার উদ্দেশ্যে যদি স্যার একটু কনক্লুডিং কিছু বলতেন স্যার ধন্যবাদ থ্যাংক ইউ ভেরি মাচ ধন্যবাদ ডক্টর শিশির যে গাইডলাইন ম্যাপ রোড ম্যাপটা খুব খুব সুচারুভাবে এবং সরলভাবে স্থাপন করার জন্য and i think this is an important aspect uh, that we must uh, inform our primary physician primary care physician internist and at the end cardiologist and nephrologist about hypertension and complications but the jinish ami just to highlight korte chai jeta jothesto bhalo bhabe highlight kora hoyeche ajker presentation e seta holo hypertension diagnosis hypertension diagnosis niye amader je ekta sequential je chinta dhara eta ekta follow kora khubi dorkar jeta boleche আমরা অফিস ব্লাড প্রেসার কিভাবে দিয়ে ডায়াগনোসিস করবো দ্য পেশেন্ট ইজ হাইপারটেনসিভ তারপর আউট অফ অফিস ব্লাড প্রেসার খুবই ইম্পর্টেন্ট এখানে আই উইল এমফেসাইজ অ্যানাদার ইম্পর্টেন্ট অ্যাসপেক্ট ইজ দ্য পেশেন্ট এডুকেশন পেশেন্ট এডুকেশন শুধু না পেশেন্ট প্রত্যেকটা পেশেন্ট হু হ্যাভ বিন ডায়াগনোস ফর হাইপারটেনশন এবং যার লাইফস্টাইল লাগুক বা ড্রাগ লাগুক বা উভয় লাগুক অবশ্যই তাকে তার নিজস্ব ব্লাড প্রেসার দেখার জন্য তাকে এডুকুয়েটলি এক্সপার্টাইজ বানাই দিতে হবে আমরা যদি লক্ষ্য করে থাকবেন প্রথম দায়িত্ব ছিল পেশেন্টকে হাউ টু টেস্ট ফর ইউরিন সুগার তাহলে পেশেন্ট এডুকেশনটা ছিল প্রাইমারি আমাদের এখন সময় শেষে উই মাস্ট এডুকেট অল হাইপারটেনসিভ পেশেন্ট হাউ টু টেক দেয়ার ব্লাড প্রেশার এডুকেটলি অ্যান্ড অ্যাকুরেটলি এবং এটা খুবই ইম্পর্টেন্ট এবং নাও ইট ইস এই ইলেকট্রনিক ব্লাড প্রেশার ইকুইপমেন্ট হ্যাজ বিন ইম্প্রুভ সো মাচ দ্যাট আই থিঙ্ক ওয়ান ওয়ার টু আওয়ার্স Uh, a presentation and a practice can make a patient uh, appropriate for uh, measuring his blood pressure ejni sha khub bhalo bhabe khyal korte hobe eta go shudhan patient education for hypertension as a whole and measurement of hypertension and follow up uh, blood pressure is particularly very important shei jinish gulo khyal korte hobe ara ekta jinish holo bp classification ni amra bishon jamalai thaki we are bombarded by different international guidelines i prefer that the global guidelines is it a professor and bolase seta holo je ihs guideline ta keta ke amra amader moto kore sajje niye kora bodhay bhalo kintu jehetu amader deshe kono authority nai ke eta korbe sudharan eta niye bibhinno dhoroner i theke geche jao seta amra jodi sarkar bondho kichu kore bhalo tobe ami ekta prostab kori professor sisi rekhana ache selim ekhana ache je amader ei association er pokkho theke amra ekta jinish booklet khubi choto akare amader কথা হলো যে বড় বড় গাইডলাইন গুলো এগুলো কার্ডিওলজিস্ট ইন্টারনিস্টদের মতো সিনিয়রদের মতো লোকদেরও এটাকে ডাইজেস্ট করে ওখান থেকে এক্সপ্রাক্ট করে এটাকে প্র্যাকটিসে নিয়ে যাওয়া বড্ড ডিফিকাল্ট হয় ইন আওয়ার সিচুয়েশন সেজন্য আমি মনে করি যে খুবই অল্প পথার জন্য যেটা করা যেতে পারে সেটা হাইপারটেনশন ম্যানেজমেন্ট গাইডলাইনস ফ্রম দ্য প্রাইম ফর দ্য প্রাইমারি কেয়ার অ্যান্ড বিয়ন্ড তাহলে আমরা প্রাইমারি কেয়ারকে টার্গেট করে একটা গাইডলাইন করে করতে পারি হুইচ উইল বি ইন কনকারেন্স with the international society of hypertension 2020 guidelines er dharai niye amra jodi korte pari tale amader ei jinish ta subidha hobe ebong amader target hobe primary care theke arambho kore internist der ebong amra beyond our aro kichu specialized section e hoyto amra specialty treatment of hypertension ta pore alochona korlam kintu community ke niye ebong primary care physician ke jodi amra baad diye di ba taderke baad diye amra dekhi kori tale hobe na beshi bhag guideline jeta amra ekhono dekhi shegulo beshi bhag target kota higher education chinta kore shudhu eta khyal korte hobe ebong obosshoi খুব যে একটা ইম্পর্টেন্ট অ্যাসপেক্ট অফ দ্য আইসাইজ গাইডলাইন ইজ দি ডিফারেনসিয়েশন বিটুইন দ্য এসেনশিয়াল অ্যান্ড অপটিমাল ম্যানেজমেন্ট সিস্টেম দিস ইজ ভেরি ইম্পর্টেন্ট বিকজ যে কোনো সোসাইটিতে নট অনলি গরিব দেশ বড় লোক দেশ না যে কোনো সোসাইটিতে উই হ্যাভ গট ডিফারেন্ট টাইপ অফ পিপুল সো যেখানে কনস্ট্রেইন আছে বিভিন্ন ধরনের মনিটরি কনস্ট্রেন্ট আছে ম্যানেজমেন্ট কনস্ট্রেন্ট আছে সেখানে অ্যাটলিস্ট আমরা যেটা করতে পারি সেটা হলে এসেনশিয়াল অংশটুকু আমরা ইম্পোজ করব এবং সম্পন্ন যদি হয় তাহলে উই ক্যান গো ফর দ্য ইয়ার সো এসেনশিয়াল কম্পোনেন্ট অফ হাইপারটেনশন ম্যানেজমেন্ট ইজ কম কমন ফর এভরিবডি অ্যান্ড দ্য অপটিমাল উইল বি ফর দোজ হু ক্যান ডু উই ক্যান ডু দিস সেটাই আমাদের খেয়াল করতে হবে ড্রাগ চয়েসের মধ্যে খুব সিম্পল জিনিস মনে রাখার চেষ্টা করতে হবে কতগুলো জিনিস বলে দেওয়া হচ্ছে যে অলওয়েজ নাও এ ডেজ স্মল ডোজ 
কম্বিনেশন ড্রাগ বেটার টু ড্রাগ কম্বিনেশন বেটার সিঙ্গেল এটা আমরা সবসময় মনে করছি দ্বিতীয় একটা জিনিস আমাদের মনে রাখতে হবে যে দেয়ার আর লট অফ ড্রাগস অ্যাপ্রক্সিমেটলি সিক্স ক্লাসেস অফ অ্যান্টি হাইপারটিসিভ ড্রাগ ইউজুয়ালি ইউজ শুধু সের মধ্যে কতগুলো টু আসপেক্ট মাস্ট বি মাস্ট বি টেকেন কেয়ার অফ ওয়ান the drug must have a blood pressure reduction capabilities at the same time the same drug must have the capabilities to reduce the cv mortality that's the prognosis and the third important aspect is whether the drug has got any evidence that they have got the capacity to regress atherosclerosis dr okay sisir khub importantly emphatically uh, emphasize koreche je hypertension basically is a vascular disease and vascular disease essentially is an atherosclerotic disease and atherosclerotic disease is especially is a cardiovascular emergency and chronic disease sutrang amra jodi hypertension ke sathe sathe amra shuru kori by evidence based therapy tale amader motamoti khub khyal kore jete hobe ar ki amader jeta chinta korte hobe jeta last kotha boli shuru jeta diye korechilam je we must emphasize the primary care physician management system of hypertension along with other non communicable diseases and complications of hypertension and ischemic heart disease eta shongi jodi integrate korte pari tale bhalo hobe i am very sorry to say that amader sarkarer pokkho theke ekta ncd program er yate kora hoyeche which is tremendously insufficient ebong eta onek kichu bojha jay na ki unfortunately i was also in the committee kintu je gulo alochito hoyeche she gulo dhak gulo jore boi agra je publish hoyeche she gulo khub ekta beshi amader deshe proyojon nay apnar jodi karo এরকম ইয়ে হয়ে থাকে সুযোগ হয়ে থাকে তাহলে দেখবেন যে এনসিডি প্রোগ্রামের জন্য ডায়াবেটিস এবং হাইপারটেনশন ম্যানেজমেন্টের জন্য অনেক টাকা খরচ করে একটা প্রোগ্রাম চলছে এনসিডি প্রোগ্রাম ওয়ার ডিজি হেলথে সেখানেও অনেক ডেফিসিয়েন্সি আছে তো আজকে যারা এই লাইনে কাজ করছেন তার যদি যদি সেই সময় লোকের সঙ্গে কোনো যোগাযোগ থাকে সেলিমের সঙ্গে অনেকেরই যোগাযোগ আছে তারা যাতে করে দেখে যে এটা আপডেট করা যায় কিনা প্র্যাকটিক্যাল করা যায় কিনা আমাদের জিপিরা ব্যবহার করতে পারে কিনা এটা খেয়াল করতে হবে so with this ami obosho uh, eske ke dhonnobad janai samiul ebong adar jara ache tader jonno janai ebong sobchaite beshi dhonnobad janai shishir ke je ekta khub simple jinish ke ekta jotil jinish ebong long way ekta boro road map theke she pura pure niye niye asche ar ki amader kotha holo je ei gyan ta ei system ta ke nije nije chole jete hobe ekta jinish moron korte hobe service is given by the soldiers not by the commanders commanders are very inefficient in the forefront they are maybe very efficient in their office and taking the salutes but soldiers are the real front line workers and they can save their country by giving their life as a martyr thank you very much thanks a lot থ্যাংকস আ লট ডক্টর প্রফেসর ডক্টর মোহাম্মদ নজরুল ইসলাম স্যার আমি এস এম হাবিবুল্লাহ সেলিম স্যার কে বলবো স্যার কি কিছু বলতে চাচ্ছেন স্যার ধন্যবাদ তালহা জি স্যার তুমি সুন্দর সুন্দর ভাবেই আমাদের এই প্রোগ্রামটা উপস্থাপন করেছো এবং আমার মনে হয় যে আমরা এই প্রোগ্রামের শেষ পর্যায়ে এবং আমাদের সোসাইটি প্রিভেনশনের নেক্সট প্রোগ্রামে সবাইকে আমন্ত্রণ জানাচ্ছি যে সেখানে আমরা আসলে বিশ্ব হার্ট দিবসের যে মূল প্রতিবাদ্য হৃদয় দিয়ে হৃদরোগের চিকিৎসা বা হৃদয় দিয়ে হৃদরোগের যত্ন সে সম্পর্কে আমরা বাংলা সোসাইটি প্রিভেনশনের পক্ষ থেকে আমাদের অবস্থান তুলে ধরবো এবং আমি আশা করি এই ফেসবুক প্রথম আলো ফেসবুক লাইভে এবং এসকে ফেসবুক লাইভে সবাই এটা উপভোগ করবে এবং এসকেএফ কে এই আমাদেরকে এই প্রোগ্রামে সহযোগিতা করার জন্য আমি ধন্যবাদ জানাচ্ছি পাশাপাশি আমাদের স্পিকার ডক্টর শিশির বসাক এবং আমাদের স্যার খুব গুরুত্বপূর্ণ কিছু পয়েন্ট উল্লেখ করেছেন অবশ্যই আমরা পরবর্তীতে আমাদের এই সারা বছর ব্যাপী অনুষ্ঠান কার্যক্রমে অংশ অনুযায়ী হাইপারটেনশন উপলক্ষে ছোট পুস্তিকা বা এমআই সম্পর্কে ছোট ছোট এরকম লিফলেট আমরা প্রস্তুত করার চেষ্টা করব সবাইকে ধন্যবাদ জানিয়ে আমি আমার বক্তব্য শেষ করছি ধন্যবাদ থ্যাঙ্ক ইউ ভেরি মাচ এসএম হাবিবুল্লাহ সেলিম স্যার আই ওয়ান্ট টু থ্যাঙ্ক টু অল ফর ডেলিভারিং ইউর এক্সেলেন্ট স্পিচ হিয়ার স্যার আমি একটা বিষয় একটু কথা বলতে চাচ্ছিলাম ডক্টর শিশির বর্ষাক স্যারকে স্যার আপনার যে অসাধারণ প্রেজেন্টেশনটা আজকে স্যার এখানে আপনি দিয়েছেন স্যার এটা যদি আমরা সারা বাংলাদেশের সব মিড লেভেল ডক্টরস এবং ইন্টার্নি ডক্টরসের কাছে পৌঁছাতে পারি স্যার সেটা কেমন হয় স্যার আমার পক্ষ থেকে তো এটা মানে খুব মানে মানে এনকারেজিং লাগতেছে যে এটা আপনি অবশ্যই করতে পারেন শিওরলি উইল ডু ইট 
Thank you very much, sir. Uh, Arik to paper, sir, to both the children, sir, Jake at the booklet, uh, Kotha, the Nozulistam, sir, Bolachan. I'm right, inshallah, sir, up not the show for concern me, up not the show for cooperation. It will come at the kitchen to the Turi Kurti Paris, sir, the Mutasha Bangladesh, Shuri, the Tabari, Amar Monohoi, at the root level doctors take a shower journal, it is of Chibish beneficial, however, sir. I'm sure you have to share for the church. I need to share with the other as care. Yeah, my guest, I'm there. Honorable Professor Nozism, sir, as an argument on a duro, postic already better for us. I want it a best. I'm a prosadito with Halo prosadito as a hypertension among skin heart disease. It's a product of postic as already better for a senator. It's a camera casual at the very issue again. Thank you very much, sir. The Professor Dr. Ebe Kalek, sir. Uh, today's program is SK Pharmaceuticals Take sponsor a chilo. First time in Bangladesh, Levamulo Deepin Group, Amlivo, and Bisoprolol Generic, Cardabis brand. Thank you very much, sir. Today's program is our show by Cooperate for a journal. Uh, today's program is our conclusion, can see, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir.